from the News Channel 5 Network and Out and About newspaper. This is Out and About Today. Sponsored by the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. Welcome to Out and About Today. I'm Brent Meredith. We have another great show for you tonight, as always. Pam Wheeler gets an exclusive first look at next month's PFLAG conference happening right here in Nashville. And Chuck Long brings us the first look at Studio 10's upcoming season. But first, we'd like to open all of our shows, as usual, with our weekly buzz about. And I'm joined by my awesome co-host, Pam and Chuck, um, today to talk about all things uh, buzzy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I almost said James, but he's not with us today. <laughs> he wasn't able to it. make it. We've got to talk for him today. I yeah. know, yeah. I know. Okay, cool. Well, we, of course, uh, we've always got a lot to cover. So first first issue here is there's a new trans group here in Nashville. I think maybe some of you, have you any of you guys heard about it yet? or seen You it? told me. I did tell you. <laughs> um, they're called Tie Phi Epsilon. Um, um, it was actually started by a local entertainer, Jordan Allen, who um, there's the, the logo there. And then I think we have a picture of Jordan as well, um, who is a, um, an, a, a male to female transgender. Um, and so I just am curious to know, though, is this is this what we're going to be seeing more of now? There's, we've got the T-Vows. We've got the uh, Tennessee Transgender Political Coalition. Um, we've got TNTJ, another group here. So this is kind of the fourth group that has formed within the last few years. Is this is this the trend? Is this where the activism is going, you guys think? Well, is it just a social group? Well, it is somewhat of a social group. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so like they said, the reason that they uh, joined the, or started this was that they've attended a lot of their events and they were looking to start a social group for people of this age bracket. So I think maybe it's for the well, younger so the transgender. So the T-Vows are too old for them, yeah. perhaps. And perhaps, I, I yeah. don't mean that in any <laughs> right, bad right. way. I'm too old for yeah. everybody. Well, they're older. But yeah. Well, and I, when you use the Greek letters, uh, that was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I'm a sorority gal. Are you guys fraternity? Yeah, I was in fraternity. Okay. Yeah. Well, so we've got something in common. But I just wonder <laughs> if that makes people interested more or yeah. they wonder if that's not for them using that. You know, I don't know. I just had that thought. No, that's a very valuable yeah. thought. And I mean, and, uh, and Jordan even mentions in the article, they picked that for sort of that reason to, to have that sense of camaraderie and that long family, lifetime family the, relationship. Yeah, there's yeah. certain. Which. It's interesting because again, I was in a fraternity in, in college, but and I bet you weren't out. So, oh my gosh, no. That's what oh my gosh, so. no. But but what was interesting it was a fraternity and a sorority. You know, it does provide brotherhood and sisterhood and that sort of thing. But it also, from the outside looking into a lot of people I know, looks almost exclusive, exclusive to sure. a lot of people. It so is. it's so interesting to me that they chose this. I mean, obviously, I, I hope that they are open to everyone who wants to be a member of it. Yeah. But it just is interesting because it can be something that's somewhat exclusive to a lot of people when they come in. And yeah, and the article it. mentioned they were they were open to, to pretty much anybody being a member. And I think Pam maybe hit it on the head earlier. They're looking to sort of, you know, again, not to not to sort of classify folks, but you've got the T-Vows, you've got the political coalition, which is maybe a little bit much too, too much activism for them. So this is a social group where they can come together. Um, they said at their meetings they're going to have speakers and entertainment. So it is a little bit more of a, of a social, social thing. Yeah. But I think <laughs> that is often more at times enticing for people that may be questioning to come in and, and participate because there's no pressure. Right. Just go and meet right. people. So. Now, one question that I have, though, is yeah. w would they have had as much success or more success if they didn't go with, like, the Greek Right. I know, wonder that, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, that's a very good question. I, I don't if know. It was just, you know, a social group, you know, for this community. Yeah. So. yeah. Perhaps we should give it a couple months and ask Justin to come on and talk about how it's going. Oh, I would good love idea. to. And I, in fact, I wanted I wanted to make sure that, that we did that to come in and see, see how it's going here in a few months. Uh, so I think it's only been announced and around for a few months now. Um, so it's still relatively new. But uh, as you said earlier, do you guys think, though, that maybe we are entering a period where gender is just more fluid in general? I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about transgender issues. We've seen a lot of things over the last few years. Are, is sort of the next generation seeing sort of a less less defined gender in any, in oh, any way? So. Yeah, of course it's moving towards that. Are you trying to bring up Miley Cyrus? I'm just trying to say, because <laughs> I mean, seriously. You read my mind, because yeah. I mean, she just came out as pansexual, which of course means they're literally open to anything. And of course, you know, she's younger. She's, she's had, there's been a lot of turmoil around her and a lot of questioning. What does this all mean? I mean, I think that's, that is part of the fluidity of it, is, is that people are probably, within 10 years, not even going to worry about identifying as pansexual. Right. I, mean, I think right. you just, you know, you what are What will be the term are? then? Yeah. You're right. just sexual, right? <laughs> that's it, really. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, well, I mean uh, and we've true. always said, you know, at some I'm point there'll come a time where there's no labels and there's no reason for these groups but, to exist. You know, exist. with political parties that are not together, I don't think it's going to be 10 years. <laughs> I mean, seriously. That's true. Yeah. You have to label. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You got Miley Cyrus behind the charge. I mean, something's <laughs> got to give there. Let's well, get Miley on to write that down. <laughs> what about you? I'm think she'll run for president down. in 2024 <laughs> since, since Kanye's running in 2020? Did you see her outfits on the VMAs? What, 
to get out of town. I just oh my said, God. so wait, did, oh, and right. I missed Kanye's... Ten changes, all just barely covering the, the breast. Yeah, so... And did she look good? Yeah, she did. Good. She was fine. Yeah. Different, we'll say. They're yeah. telling us we have two minutes. We okay. should probably get to a more serious <laughs> okay. topic. But go ahead, finish well, it up. Con is Kanye really running for president? Oh, no. Okay. That was just Kanye. <laughs> that was a joke. Is Trump... Okay. okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so our, our next topic is a little bit more serious, and, and I think we're all familiar with the with the recent shooting that happened, the Virginia uh, reporter and photographer that were literally gunned down on camera live. Um, and sort of, I've got a clip here of some coverage of that. But as we as we learned, the shooter, who also was a reporter for the same station, was was gay and had suffered what he claimed some uh, discrimination. But we've got a little clip here I want to show, and we can talk about it on the backside. We just heard, uh, Don, uh, from the guy who fired him, the station uh, the direct, the news director in Tallahassee, what, 15 years ago, that there was uh, some, uh, I guess, anti-gay discrimination that he felt there when some of his colleagues found out he was gay. They were making fun of him, some of the outfits uh, that he was wearing, uh, and that in years afterwards, uh, he was actually involved in uh, launching these gay porn websites. What's your reaction when you hear all of this? Well, I think that the, the gay porn side thing to me is I don't really see the relevance of it because it, it's, if it's not illegal, then what's wrong with him owning gay porn sites or straight porn sites or as a journalist forming, you know, a media uh, company like, you know, our Dan Abrams did. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with him. He's an entrepreneur. He's an American. As long as there's two consenting adults, I don't see what difference it makes that he owns gay. It may be salacious. Maybe it helps you sort of put a timeline line together, but I don't see the relevance. As far as his coworkers criticizing him, listen, I don't want to, again, with the sites, I don't want to gay shame him. There's nothing wrong with being gay. I'm sure he probably faced some discrimination, as we all do, and that's horrible, but it still does not condone his actions two days ago. I just want to make it clear. Okay, guys, is it relevant? Is it not? I think it's the way it's reported. I don't think it was that relevant, but I think the way it was reported was not good. I yeah, agreed. And I think we do want to get in these folks' heads, so we do want to learn all these things about them in general. Yeah. Info comes out. It's okay to me that it came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of agree with both of you. I think it's it's relevant, but maybe the way it was reported. We've got to head out. We're going to close out with the uh, cover of the September issue of Out and About, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.